I would rather like live life by the fucking seat of my coat or whatever, coat of my seat tails, seat of my coat tails, by the tails of my wings, by the w feathers of my bird wings. Yeah, that's what they say. That's the saying, yeah. I'd rather fly on my bird's feather wings high and live every day large. <laughs>Hey guys, before we get into today's video, I want to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Dinnerly. Dinnerly is a weekly meal subscription plan which makes dinner time affordable and easy, and for as little as $2.99 per plate, which is insane. Despite my attire, I am not a chef by any means, but with Dinnerly, you could choose from over a hundred quick and simple recipes each week that all taste amazing. And the process is very simple. You just select the meals you want from their website, they send you all the prepackaged and measured ingredients, and then they'll email you the easy to read recipe so you can follow along. And the best part is it actually is just the recipe. So unlike other online recipes, you don't have to read 14 paragraphs of backstory. Just quick and concise instructions. A few of our favorite recipes we had this week were quesadillas, shredded beef enchiladas, and no-bake pumpkin chocolate cheesecake cups. All of them were amazing, they only used about six ingredients or less, and prep time only took about 20 minutes each. And because the ingredients are pre-packaged and pre-portioned, there wasn't any waste. It's easier than meal prepping, cheaper than eating out, and more convenient than going to the grocery store. And if you're not satisfied, you can cancel at any time with no penalties. And if you need just a little bit more incentive, we have a special discount for my audience. You can use the link in the description of the pinned comment, or use my coupon code at checkout, Matty140, to get $140 off your first five boxes. So try it for yourself and make dinner time delicious, easy, and affordable with Dinnerly. And now, on to the video. Hi guys, welcome back to Give It To Me Straight, where we always keep it real. Minus a couple things. But on the show today, we have the pop icon, fresh off her second studio album, it's Slater. Eee. <laughs> welcome to Vegas. Thank you. You're just the part, I see. Just yeah. You're a Nomi Malone fantasy. Nomi Malone, big Nomi Malone fan. She's the blueprint, really. She's my blueprint, for sure. Well, congratulations on your new album. This is your Thank second you. one, technically, right? Yeah, the yeah. Sophomore album. The mixtape doesn't count, so this is like number two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this <laughs> new album, Starfucker, it's a good, yeah. for anyone who hasn't heard it yet, it's a good, wholesome family experience. Yes, very much so. Mm -hmm. It's like, I feel like it's... It's not, it doesn't seem as vulgar as some of my other music, but it definitely is like, I don't know. There's a lot of like drug glamorization. Yeah, but in a fun way. In a fun way. Yeah, not a problematic way. It's like, it's just, you know, it's just pop. We're just cutting up lines. Yeah, you know, we're just, uh, we're just like, uh, like, you know. But at the time, at the time this video is being recorded, um, the album hasn't came out yet, but as time of posting, it will be. Mm -hmm. But because I'm an industry figure, I was given a promo code to review the album ahead of time. So... I get to talk about it in retrospect. So Yay! We get to, we get so to you talk. heard it? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that so makes we, me so, so happy. We don't have to be cryptic about it. We can talk about it as if it's awesome. currently out because it will be. So Amazing. Yeah, so fret not. Fret not. So if, if you could, like, singing in the style of an emo pop punk cover, what is your favorite song on the album? That's like a tough voice to nail down. Mm -hmm. Is it? Or like, I, what is it? I love Hollywood. Like that's how that's, they. That's pretty solid. There we yeah. go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's the vibe. I'm friends with a lot of that kind. Like I feel like emo like rapper people. Mm. So I feel like that like kind of voice is like. I feel like I'm better at that than maybe I thought. So like we step. So I love Hollywood is probably your favorite song on the album. Mm. What's your mom's least favorite song on the album? Is it purr or plastic? Ooh, probably purr. I don't know if she's heard purr. I haven't really played her the full album. You haven't given your mom a code. I haven't given her the code. She wouldn't know how to you're use gonna, it if she had it. Well, still. You're going to make your mom wait until the day of release to listen yeah, to like, it? Yeah, I'm like, mom, can you buy it on iTunes? I uh, could really use the $10. <laughs> like, I love listening to your new album. I'm like, yeah, whenever it hits the shelves, go out and buy it. It's really good. I know. I'm like trying to plug it to her. Uh -huh. I'm like, if you could pre-save it, that would be fierce. <laughs> Um, but yeah, she's gonna hate Purr just cause like that, not only is that like about drugs, it's about like every single drug and I say like, I talk about like my pussy and my kitty cat and mm -hmm. all those things, you yeah. know? <laughs> cause your mom actually is like a big supporter of your music. Even, yeah. She doesn't like the ones where you curse, but overall she's a big fan. Overall she's a fan. I never had any issues with like parental, there's like certain things that she hasn't loved to find out through my music, like just things about like sex or drugs or like I don't even know like I feel like early on in my career there were like interviews that would come out and it would be like the headline would be like bisexual artist Slater and she'd be like I didn't know that 
And I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah. And then, like, just, yeah, things about it'd be like me talking about, like, being a cam girl. And she'd be like, I didn't know that either. And I'd be like, well, yes. It's like, you think you know your kids until you read their Wikipedia <laughs> and, page. Uh, until you read their, like, paper yeah. magazine article. And yeah. you're like, oh, shit. It's like, she's, yeah. she's so excited to see you in Rolling Stone until she reads Rolling Stone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. But honestly, she's like a star fucker herself, where in the sense that, I feel like when things started hitting off for me and like my I started to grow a lot, the like care about me being squeaky clean became like less and less. She was like, she's like, well, it's working. Like she like didn't care. You know what I mean? She wasn't, yeah. she wasn't as judgmental when she saw it like started to work. I feel like if I was like still a hair salon receptionist, like showing puss on the internet, maybe she wouldn't be loving it so much. It's like being opportunistic, is that hereditary? Is that where you get it from? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I see an opportunity and I, I grab it, I don't let go. I grab it by the haunches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen like drag queens performing your songs? Yes, oh my gosh, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. What was a, what was like the first, fir first time you saw a drag performer performing one of your songs? It had to have been online, cause I feel like I, in St. Louis, there's definitely some like drag bars and stuff but I feel like the culture there it's not as big as a place like LA or you know New York obviously mm -hmm. but online like I was so my career was so internet based that it was like people would start to post my songs they'd post drag performances to my songs and they'd post my songs playing in like gay clubs and I just that was kind of like the first my first realization like where my music was kind of landing mm -hmm. and I was like very pleased because I feel like that was always like my community and my friends growing up so I was like oh like Mm. it's like my music is landing where it needs to so that's good where I want it to like land so that was always like the target demographic yeah I mean in a way but not not in like a calculated way more of just like when I was in high school I feel like I like was like my like small friend group it was like two girls two gays like that was like our little like group so I feel like we always were like really into Marine and the Diamonds and we like loved Lana Del Rey and we were like Tumblr kids and we loved all of that kind of like internet like gay pop music and like stand it all together so like when I started becoming an artist like I was like seeing myself like have those fan bases like with like younger kids like I was out of high school but now I was seeing like these high schoolers kind of like appreciate my music in the same way kind of in that like but like on Twitter and not Tumblr. I feel like your this next album is gonna it's definitely gonna be some drag performances coming from it I can already kind of see it I think um like at a time is Belladonna they're very like Typical night performances, uh, Rhinestone Heart is like a brunch show. It's very poppy. That's a morning yeah. song. It's a morning song for sure. <laughs> but I feel like the real good performances are going to be like the CD underground bars where they're doing like purr and plastic. Yeah. Like, it's going to make a mix of that. A little erotic electronic. A little bit, yeah. They're going to be like like half naked, hair on their chest. They're going to be pouring milk on themselves for some reason. Yeah, it's... Drinking the milk, making themselves throw it up. Yeah, yeah. Art pop. Very that, yeah. very that. I think, I think it's definitely the vibe for all the drag performers out there that are getting some ideas. If you are a drag performer performing any songs off uh, Starfucker, make sure to tag Slater. Tag, the vibe is. or you can write the link down on a piece of paper. You could mail it to me in a letter, mm -hmm. and I can type the link into my search bar. Yeah. That's how my grandma does it. <laughs> is it? Yeah. I have to write down the uh -huh. link and she would she type the link however you have to reach mm -hmm. people you know you got to meet people where they're at yeah so, you know, whatever you got to do yeah but yeah if you're a drag performer perform a song send it to slater unless it's bad and delete it and quit drag but, <laughs> you know life advice life advice yeah <laughs> yeah I, I i feel like maybe it's a little overzealous of me to say mm -hmm. but i feel like starfucker is our generation's abbey road you know what i mean yeah i, mean, I agree yeah um, I would say the same thing. I also, I love the Beatles. So like, I would hope that I, I feel like, I feel like I could be one of them. More or less. We yeah. have so much in common. Yeah. You know? You're like, you're, you're like, I'm like the Yoko, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just screaming and hitting a tambourine. <laughs> that's the new album. That's Starfucker in a nutshell. That is, uh, <laughs> that's musical, that's musical genius. Yeah. But as you're saying, being a fan of like the Beatles, mm -hmm. with your music, there's an obvious inspirations of like Britney and Sophie, mm -hmm. but you actually were really big into like other artists like the Beatles, the Beach Boys, uh, yeah. Dennis Wilson. Yeah, yeah, oh my God, I love, I love the Beach Boys. That My mom really like raised me on so much different music. I feel like the Beach Boys are like a big one. She was like a stan. I have like a signed Dennis Wilson. Um, I think it's the album's Pacific Ocean Blue. Mm -hmm. 
I have like a signed Dennis Wilson album, which is crazy because he's like, you know, he has passed and everything. But it was like my mom's prized vinyl and like I have that. And she like loved the Beach Boys, loved Dennis. Dennis was like, it's so funny like how stan culture has always kind of been around. Mm -hmm. Dennis was like her one, that was like her Harry Styles. <laughs> And um, yeah, like I feel like I listen to so much stuff. My musical reference points, I always kind of get bummed when people compare everything I do just to like current pop because I feel like I listen to so much shit and I've been listening to so much shit since I was really young. And yeah, like I love everything. I'm like, a, I'm a music nerd. Like I, I really do love like so many different genres, so much music. I love country music. I love, I love it all. So I feel like yeah, this album kind of takes pieces from like a lot of different things and puts it all into one. It's not like, it's not just like referencing pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But w one of the biggest like turning points in your life, mm -hmm. musically, whenever you started getting these references, whenever, was whenever your grandpa gave you his old stereo system. And that's when yeah. you started like, collecting albums. Yes. Do you, do you think like, Slater would be here today if it wasn't for like that pivotal moment? Do you think that was like the first big domino to fall? Absolutely. And it's actually really funny that you bring that up because I dedicated this album to him. Um, like in like the little dedications, I said I dedicate this album to my papa. He had like this turntable. It was like a 90s turntable that he like gave to me. And then like I was in high school. I like wanted to learn how to use it. Like I feel like my musical taste before then was pretty much like what I was buying on iTunes. But then he gave me his I was like left his turntable when he went into an old folks home. And this is like my mom's dad, by the way, but he, like I had all of her vinyl collection that she kept from when she was really young mm -hmm. to like, and I was like, oh, like I'll test it on my turntable. And it was like Thriller by Michael Jackson, like Off the Wall by Michael Jackson, all of her Beach Boys records, the Beatles. She's like a huge Elton John fan who I'm like, I love Elton John. Like it was just so much, I was like a really big Lady Gaga fan. So I feel like that was kind of like my bread and butter. And then, you know, I started to like expand my taste. I feel like my life has just been me like trying to expand my taste in all these different things, whether mm -hmm. it's like movie music, whatever, but. Well, with yeah. all like the references and music you were listening to, like was pop always like the path you wanted to go down or was there a time based off the other music inspirations where you wanted to make like good music? <laughs> um, pop, I mean, I, pop's always like my number one. I feel like, I feel like I could like sit down and really like, and like I, you know, I play instruments, I play guitar and stuff and like, nah, no one wants to hear me do that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like pop's always my number one. That's what I'm best at. If I wanted to like sit down and try to like crank out like a really like thoughtful, poignant, like indie album, like I could, but like, that's not exciting to me. Like what excites me is like drugs, make this kitty go purr. Like that excites me, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think it's just because I'm a, a, you know, a pea brain drag artist, but I also like the mindless pop songs. Too, yeah, you know? life life is so shitty think. and hard. I want to have fun. I want to have fun. I want to listen to music with my friends. I want to drive around. I want to turn it the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone loves, like, a good, like, Joni Mitchell, but not, like, in the car, you know? Not it's, in the car. No, you need this mindless pop music to get you through the rush. Yeah, like. no, I'll save her for, like, my, like, 2 a.m. suicidal ideation hours. Like, mm -hmm. that's what that music is for. Pop music... <laughs> is like to lift you up. But before like the pop music and like the brain rot reality TV, like how, what were, who were you as a kid? Like what was like little baby Slater like? If you could like take us back. <laughs> <laughs> take us back. What kind, of, what kind of kid were you? Oh my God. I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> I, I was quirky. I thought that this was, you could not tell me that this wasn't like SNL level humor and comedy like i was like i was like yeah. that is like a derp face that's so cringy you're a thespian i'm about to like sinead o'connor about to be like kill the real enemy and like rip <laughs> this is you <laughs> this is so sad <laughs> but yeah i was i was i was like i was like a dorky kind of like a chunky like mm. silly kid are you a horse girl I wasn't a horse girl. No? No, I didn't. This looks like a horse My family girl. couldn't afford horses. Oh my God, my cousin's wedding. Ah! That looks like a horse girl. I was just like, I was really challenged in many departments, like <laughs> style, hair. Uh -huh. I just had gotten highlights for the first time. I remember feeling cunt on this trip. I was like, yes, cousin, happy wedding. I got highlights. I can't see the full picture, but I just know you're wearing a wedge. I was wearing a wedge. I'm also <laughs> smiling like that to hide my braces. I hated the fact that I had braces. I had braces till I was like 16 or 17. And when those braces came off trust, I was like smoking weed. I was like, I'm gonna be a slut. Like I got my braces off and went crazy. But before then I was just like, 
you know? Mm-hmm. I, like, wasn't very cool. I didn't have a lot of friends, but I, I loved the internet. That's for sure. Hey, uh, honestly, internet friends, I think, are more valuable than friends that you're forced to be around, you know? Yeah. With internet friends, you have common interests. You met for a reason. High school friends, you're there because you have the same class periods together. Very so. true. Yeah. Yeah. I always loved fashion, too. Like, you can't tell because I, like, look like a mess. Well, I, but believe I, it or I, not, I that a, girl had an interest in fashion. I, I saw the purple American apparel hoodie. I know you were. I could tell. I like, <laughs> I'm like, that was actually really indie sleaze. That was actually really cool. If yeah. you really think about it. <laughs> no, I was I like, either. yeah, I was just like heavily online. I loved like, I just loved internet culture and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But I just wasn't very cool. It took me until about like age like 17 or 18 to like really like, I like started like getting into trouble and skipping class and hanging out with skater boys. And like, that's kind of when I... You, the real cooled you started up. to emerge. It cooled up. Yeah, it cooled up. Yeah. <laughs> started, like, listening to cooler music. Mm-hmm. Not that, like, life is about being so cool, but I just, you know, I definitely went through, like, a rebellious phase that helped shape me into, like, what I think I am now, mm-hmm. you know. At the expense of, like, your GPA, but, you know. Oh, just... my, yes. Major yeah. expense. <laughs> 1.5. It's a miracle. We even walked across the stage and got a <laughs> diploma. Yeah, hey, shout out No Child Left Behind. Right? <laughs> no, I had a math I had a math teacher who I cheated on a test. He caught me. At the end of the year, I think I was a senior, he pulled me aside and he's like, I just want to let you know, I'm passing you in this class, not because you've gotten the grades or earned it, because I never want to see you again. And I was like, well, yes. And that's who you dedicate this next album to. Yes, Mr. Phillips. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out, Mr. Phillips. Shout out, Mr. Phillips. I love that a lot of people have the story of like, why'd you become a pop artist? It's like... I had a teacher in middle school that told me I never could, so I wanted to prove them wrong. But you're just like, like my teacher just told me they never want to see me again. Never want to see me again. I had a really, I went to um, a really fabulous public high school in St. Louis that had a great music program. I wasn't really a theater kid per se, but I was in choir, which was like a class. It wasn't just like a extracurricular. Shout out Mr. Cannon. You're crazy. <laughs> you're crazy. You are the Nardmar of drag. <laughs> like, ah! shout out Mr. But genuinely shout out Mr. Cannon. He actually, crazy fact. Um, I don't know if you listen to 100 Gex, but Dylan Brady, who's like a really big like music producer and electronic artist with 100 Gex, went to my same high school and had the same choir teacher. So oh, we, shit. like another, like, hy- you know, hyper pop. Like, it's just funny that we both. A lot of people did not expect a hyper pop to come out of the St. Louis area. This, it was the renaissance. <laughs> yeah. So you have like two speeds. You have the kids that are happy and like spitting in their dip cups. And mm-hmm. then you have the kids that are like. I'm going to b- bang my pots and pans together on a mic in my closet. Yeah. Yeah. Is it true that you once got kicked out of a Tame Impala concert for having a fake ID? Uh, yes. Hold the phone. It was so unfair. It was so unfair. If I ever play the pageant, trust and believe, I will be like, I need that security guard. I need him to come right here. I was just trying to have a good fucking time. Mm-hmm. I had my sister's ID. because si- I have a sister who's like four years older than me. Mm-hmm. And I go up to use my sister's ID and it had always worked for me. Like I would buy alcohol with this thing. I, would, I was like a senior in high school. Like I wasn't like, I wasn't like a rookie fake ID user either. And he was like, this is Jew. And I was like, what? And he was like, what's your sign? And I was like, I didn't fucking know my sister's astrology sign. Mm. And I was like, uh, like I was on a game show. I like paused. I was like, I think I'm an Aries. Like I like didn't know she's a Pisces. Mm. But he kicked me out and I was like so distraught. And I hung out at the back of the pageant in St. Louis where like the loading trucks are. Like, and I just like listened through like the crack. And then I ended up meeting the keyboardist, Jay Watson. He, like, came out, and I was like, well, I've been waiting. <laughs> can you, can I? And I just talked to him for a sec. I didn't ask for a picture or anything, but. Did, did your mom know that you were using your sister's ID for stuff? Or is this something else she's going to find out through another interview? She knew. Drinking? Okay. I wasn't from, like, a fr- drinking frowned upon household. <laughs> no? <laughs> if, you, if you didn't know. Okay. She, like, drinking was very normal. Like, I think my sister, like, it was one of those things where I'd be like, can I borrow your fake ID? And, like, like in front of my mom. Like, and my mom would be like, oh, my God. Like, you girls. Like, she didn't really give a fuck. You're like one of those kids that swished apple juice around like it was a whiskey, not realizing that normal kids don't do that. Yeah. Not you? Yeah. yeah. I always, like, it always shocked me when people had really strict parents because mine just were, were not at all, mm-hmm. you know? They let this happen. Yeah, they let this happen. Yeah, that's what happens. Get a rain on your kids or else they'll become pop stars. 
<laughs> really skanky, slutty, horrible, vulgar ones. Yeah, not even the good kind. Not even the good kind. One of these. One of these budget wig. Oh my I, god. I, I don't mind like the music and your lyrics. It's the wig. You know, that's where we draw a line. The wig is offensive. I know. Baby queens, I swear. Baby, baby queens. Queen. I am like a baby queen. Yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of pop stars are just kind of drag queens in their, their own way. Just different kinds of performances. Yeah, definitely. You know? I mean, I, I for sure, like, I feel like, you know, I roll up to the gig and do my own wig and makeup like like every other, like, you know what I mean? Like, it is a very similar yeah. vibe. It's like you, uh, you're more revered in, mm -hmm. like, an artist perspective and audience perspectives, but you make less from live shows. But, you know, that's just, like, the <laughs> trade-off that you get. <laughs> That's just the trade-off you got to live with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I was like, there's no overhead for us. We're li we play music that we don't have the rights for and lip-sync to it, and people act like we're artists, right? you know? <laughs> but, you, I mean, you are. Showbiz. Showbiz. Oh. It's all showmanship at the end of the day. I guess. If people are entertained by it, you know, mm -hmm. there's only two kinds of people in the world. Those who entertain. And those who observe. And those who observe. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that? That was, yeah, that was nice. But you mentioned your choir teacher earlier. Who do you think had a bigger impact on your life, Mr. Cannon or Dr. Nyack? <sighs> oh my god. Oh my god. I have I haven't even seen Dr. Nyack, so your snooping has led you to a, a dead end. I I did a consultation. I thought about it. Oh, you didn't use him? I thought he was the one you used in St. Louis. I haven't gone on under the knife just yet, actually. Oh. So all this stuff. I'm like, I'm like, it. you've been faking, you've been posing this whole time. It's manifestation. Oh. I'm hoping that this album can bring me new tits. That's like my goal. I want like bigger breasts, and I'm hoping that I actually know not Dr. Nyack. He does fabulous work. Shout out Dr. Nyack. Um, Dr. Rady Rabon of California is the teardrop eyes wide shut style tit master. If you're looking for a lift and implant, he is the one to go to, but it is very expensive. So if you could all stream my album so I can get Dr. Rady Rabon tits, I would be very grateful. <laughs> this whole time because you had the username Miss New Titty, yeah. this album, Australia. These are my cool. real tits. I thought this was all just like celebration of like the titties. I didn't realize. Yeah, I've never I, I wanna get my tits done really bad. I like I love plasticity. I love like plastic tits and surgery. I get like, I'll be very transparent. Like I get Botox and I get my lips done. I've never had, I've never actually like been under the knife other for like, other than like wisdom teeth. Well, it, it's a shame that you didn't, haven't actually gone and gotten the procedure done because you would have been a perfect walking billboard for whichever doctor you went to with your new music video for Erotic Electronic. I know. So for people that haven't watched it yet, Erotic Electronic is a music video you put out mm -hmm. to tease the upcoming song and you were walking completely naked down the streets of LA. Yeah. How terrifying was that experience? It wasn't, it was, it was definitely weird. It was weird. I, it went a lot better than I thought. I was like certain that like, there was gonna be like a tweaker that tried to like reach out and like touch my tits. Mm -hmm. Nothing of the sort, which was great. Um, uh, it was crazy though. It's definitely like, I've never experienced anything like that before. I wish I did have surgery before the video though, because in the comments when I put that out, I knew people were gonna be like fat, ugly, but like people were like, she has no hips. And I was like, oh my God, that is so specific. Thank you very much. <laughs> like a new insecurity unlocked. I know, yeah. It was like all people being like, huh, very square body. And I'd be like, right, yes. <laughs> That is true. <laughs> I, I see that now. Nothing will humble you more than strangers on the internet. Oh know? my God, all the time. The, all, all the people you've met, who's been the celebrity that you realized was a fan of yours that shocked you the most? Um, that is a good question. I was not expecting this question. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's like the ones that chose you for their tours, like the Charlie XCX. Uh, yeah. Tuvalu, Tuvalu, Tuvalu? Uh, Tuvalu. Tuvalu. When I was a Scooby-Doo. Tuvalu, oh, that's a good mental trick. It didn't really shock me that she liked my music because she was always such an influence early on, but Heidi Montag, mm. when I very first started making music, I would talk in interviews about how her album Superficial really inspired the kind of pop music I was making. She just hit me up recently and was like, happy, she hit me up yesterday and was like, happy birthday. Like, she is so sweet and cool. And I feel like she, I was such a Hills, like, fanatic that, like, that, that kind of, like, shocked me when she was, like, showing me love just because I feel like she is such like a 2000s like queen, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You actually recorded a remix of Gimme More with her. Yeah. That you couldn't release because the rights were too expensive. It is so expensive to clear samples. I've had a couple songs that had to die because of the sample clearance. Um, that was one of them.
the Heidi Montag thing, which sucks because I the her verse was really good and it was really cool. And I would love to leak it if she would be down. I would love to leak it sometime or maybe we could put it on SoundCloud. But um, I also wrote a song that sampled Stereo Love. You know that song that's like... Mm, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's like 15K to clear that sample. I'm not paying that. Fuck that. Like, absolutely not. Oh, so God, neither is my label. So like, I'm just like... She's got to die. The song, and it leaked, and everyone's like, release Stereo Love. And I'm like, I can't. Or Heartbreak in Stereo. I forget what this song is called. Can you release it if you're not going to profit off of it? Like, just like, in general, just throw it out there? You can, but you have to pay. All the writers of the original have to come to an agreement for you to use the sample, and everyone, you have to, like, clear the song. The whole process is really daunting, honestly. Like, I, I will try in the future to steer clear from samples. My song, Out of Time, has a sample on it. And clearing it was like such a thing, and it was like really expensive. And what's the sample? Um, it's this really old like disco crate digger like song by Phil Fearon and the Galaxy. I can actually play it here. I want to like, I, I just I I'm I'm sorry to go on this tangent, but like I just think it's interesting to like hear it because a lot of music used to be really sample heavy, and it's not anymore. And I think people don't because it sucks to like have to pay. Yeah. Here's the this is the song. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then like, but that's that's all that that's always sampled is just that like loop. And it's like when you think about like Black Eyed Peas music or like that Fergie day uh Fergie's like debut solo album, mm -hmm. all samples like the bah, bah, nah, nah, dah, dah. like that's like a really famous old song. Like everyone used to sample shit. No one samples shit anymore. Fergalicious, huge sample. Oh yeah. 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 Crazy in Love, Beyonce, yeah. sample. Of celebrities that probably are big fans of yours, there's also ones that are not, including Sarah Michelle Gellar. <laughs> she, like, <laughs> kind of is. Yeah, yeah, but for those that haven't seen, there was a video where she was reading tweets that mentioned her, and she read a tweet <laughs> that... Well, Gay what's... people are so uh, espresso martini oyster... Or Sarah, Sarah Michelle Gellar is Daphne Blake, espresso martini oysters with the girls' night, and they're so right. Yeah. Exactly that. <laughs> exactly that tweet. Verbatim. She didn't understand, and but she saw. I don't understand. She saw it. your username, which said Miss New Titties, and she went on a huge tangent about how those all of you out there that are making your usernames, you need to consider who might see them. Your your employers, friends, future coworkers. Future employers cleared me. She cleared me. Yeah. And she's so right because if this music shit doesn't work out, and I'm trying to get a nine to five. Mm -hmm. And everyone's going to be like, what was this about daddy as fuck and eating your clit? And I'm going to be like, well, so the thing was, <laughs> I know how to use Excel, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I mean, you don't. Okay, go on. No, but I, she is so funny. Like, I thought that was so great. Obviously, I think, like, I think whoever picked that question for BuzzFeed, mm. like, picked it because it was, like, from my Twitter. And they, like, you know, thought I was probably, like, funny as an artist or whatever. But she doesn't know. Like, she yeah. doesn't know that, like, I, like, make music. But she ended up reaching out to me on DM. And she was like, I am so sorry if I offended you. Like, um, like I think you're great. Like, I hope all is well. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, Sarah. I was like, Sarah, you are my best fucking friend, girl. Like, I love you. What was your reaction whenever... <laughs> that first came out that when you first saw that, your first like acknowledgement from Sarah Michelle Gellar, did you see the video or did someone send it to you or? Um, someone sent, people were tagging me in it on Twitter and I squealed like a pig. I was so pleased. <laughs> I love getting dragged. Like I, I can take the piss out of myself very much so. And like, I never, not even for a second was I like, oh no, like when she, I was like watching it and I was like dead that she was reading my tweet and then it kept going and going and I was like, oh my God. Like, I loved it. You've always, like, relished in, like, the negativity and, like, hate messages and stuff. Because even, like, looking back at, like... I love attention. Like, at your curious cat, people, like, reading you and dogging you and saying stuff like shit about your music, where someone will just be like, your music is trash and you're a whore. You're just like, yes, daddy, make me come. I love it when you talk dirty. Like, everything. And yeah. Just, I can tell you're just, like, soaking up. Mm -hmm. Like, all the hate. Yeah. I, th I think it's the healthiest way to go about it, though, honestly. Yeah, like, I feel like my vibe is just, like, the girl who's, like, sh I'm, like, smiling and shaking my tits. People are going, like, boo! And I'm just, like, yeah, 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 you don't like it? Like, I, like, that's, like, that's, like, my career in a nutshell. Yeah, that that's the way to go about it. Like, the two healthiest ways is to either ignore the comments or embrace the hate. Mm -hmm. you, know? you have to embrace the hate. Get into it. Yeah, I, I get a really specific type of hate, too, where it's, like, I feel like it's mostly, I don't know, people, like, read me down. Like, it's crazy. But, like, it's, 
to me, if you're going to step to the plate and attack me or try to attack my music or attack my character, make it funny. And then I'll and I'll ha- give you a high five for it. Like, you know what I mean? Read me good. And like, we can all laugh about it. Do you get more hate from like straight men or conservative women? Neither. F- gay men. Oh, gay men? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. My... I'm not even on the ra- I'm not even on the radar of not straight men or conservative women. Not, like not your target demographic coming for you. No, for real. That is, that is that is who I get attacked from most is is probably gay men. That's, my, that's most of my audience. Not good. No, I mean, but that's also who loves me the most. So it, it, it's like it, it, earlier, it, it, your duality. own people. Yeah, yeah, the duality. I think that I don't know. I've never had conservative uh men or women really like on my dick like it's very rare that i get like a comment of someone being like this is inappropriate and you should be ashamed of yourself like every once in a while but i'm just kind of like yeah whatever but like i feel like most people kind of treat me as an artist like you know i do things for shock value like i feel like there's conservative people from my hometown who aren't even like offended by my shtick it's mostly like it's mostly like evil gay stan Twitter people that are like, you're fat and ugly and you're a hag and la 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 and yeah. <laughs> he's, gotta, he's gotta love like the brutal, honest opinions, you know? Love it. The people that let it all hang out. It's like they're the worst kind of people, but also respect for just, you know. Respect for the trolling and also be it's better for my social media engagement. Please send me hate comments. Everything feeds the algorithm. It feeds the algorithm. Mm-hmm. But you've come a long way, like, in your music in the past, like, few years. What has been your proudest accomplishment so far? Ooh, proudest accomplishment? This is kind of a random, like, thing to say, but my album cover for this album... The like album cover? The album cover. Creating, to me, it's not even, like, milestone things or, like, meeting someone who's famous or... To me, like my output, like I had this idea and I wanted it to be that and I executed it and seeing everyone online, like love it. Charlie XCX like quote tweeted and she's like, I love this album cover. Like I feel like I hadn't like heard from her in like a really long time. So I was like to like put something out and have people like respond to it and love it. Like I feel like that was one of like the proudest days of my life was like revealing my mm-hmm. album cover. I love album covers. I love the I love album art. There's such an art form to making a great album cover. And I feel like this is like, I just have never felt better about like a visual that I've created. I, th- I thought you were gonna say something like, oh, being in Rolling Stone or opening for Tuvalu. And you're just like, I made a sick ass album cover. Yeah, <laughs> my, like... yeah my, <laughs> my art will always be the things, I mean, opportunities. I'm so grateful for all opportunities and things like that. But to me, like when I die one day, it will be my art and my output into the world that is left behind. And to have made something like, when I'm dead and gone and like that vinyl record is still around because someone's, you know, it's your, it's gay your... parent like has it tucked away in their vinyl records, just like the way I got mine from my mother. Like that is like what I created, like the pink, like the pink transparent, like physical record, the slip, the track list, that is what I have made and I, I'm so, so proud of it. Like 2080, some kid's gonna be going through their grandparents' record collection, they're gonna blow the dust off. And they're gonna the go, of... nice tits. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, my, my day, this was music. Yeah. Like, have you seen the videos of like the old people in nursing homes that are like have dementia when they play old music and they're <laughs> like, oh, and they come back. The queer old folks home. <laughs> where they have like the butch lesbians and they have like the old like gay men like uh-huh. everyone's gonna be like oh shit drugs make this kitty yeah. go purr <laughs> that's good that's they good got that one cranked in the non-binary section of the queer old folks home and yeah. like i feel like they're that is like coming like i feel like like oh my god then paul stop <laughs> no, like, literally, like i feel like the future of like old folks home will be like very like queer old folks communities where it's like categorized like there's like the non-binary wing and then there's like like the drag queens like the retired drag queen section yeah it's it's like the it would be the opposite of what it is now where it's like people like kids in the future will be like more conservative and like whenever oh yeah whenever like an old person is just like you know it's okay to not be a boy or a girl i'm like oh my god they're old, ignore them. Yeah, literally. They're like, sorry, sorry about my them paw. Like, yeah. <laughs> them paw is really good. But it, it, it's interesting that you bring up Charlie XCX loving your album as a sign of like, you made it and it's like a sign of accomplishment because she's actually become something of like a contemporary of yours now with like how, you, how far you've come in music. Mm. Because you both had songs 
in the movie Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Oh, yeah. Both on the soundtrack for that. Yeah. It's crazy to think about. That was a cool movie. That was a good, I loved that. That was like a fun pinch me moment too. Did they just like reach out to you? They're like, hey, can we use your song for this? Or Yeah, yeah. Movie syncs. The way, the world of sync is crazy, which I didn't know until obviously I got more into music. But um, like people who are in like the music department of a movie, like when they're like curating the soundtrack to be what it's going to be, they'll like reach out to artists. and They'll be like, hey, this is like our budget. We would love to use your song. And you get like, um, you get like a fee for it. And then you also... Like this, I think that was more of like an indie movie. So I was like, oh, no, no matter what it is, like I'm down. Like I love that. I love cinema, love movies, huge movie buff. So I was like so gagged that like my song was going to be in an A24 movie. That's like the coolest shit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was like really exciting. And you never know how it's going to be used. And like I remember seeing it in theaters, like AMC theater with like my mom and like a, a full audience and like to hear like daddy as fuck pumping through an AMC theater. It was, it was like the first song like on the movie too. It's, like, yeah, it's, like, it's, like it's the intro. It's, it's like the shining scene when they drive to the hotel. Yeah. I feel like they did an homage to that where they're driving to that house and it was like the daddy as fuck extendo remix. It was like longer than the actual song. It just kept going and going and I was like, ah, I'm so excited. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. But with the songs that you make, including like daddy as fuck, are you really that girl? Like with the music, the music you're making the vibe. Like, are you really that girl, or is it just like, are you making songs about the girl that you want to aspire to be, or the image you want to portray? No. Let's go on one to ten, how Slater are you really? I am a ten. You full Slater? That's full you. Slater. I am a full Slater. I'm fully who I am in my music, and actually, Daddy is fuck. A lot of people don't know this. That song is like autobiographical. My first trip to LA, I had sex with a model, like at the Chateau, like. Is he like a model or like a hand model? Like a model. Okay. Or maybe I shouldn't really like reveal too much. But like What's I just. What's government name? <laughs> I'll tell you after. Um, but it was like, it was such a crazy night. It was like my big first like star fuck moment, I guess, which is like full circle with my album and everything now. But I felt so fucking cool. I was like, fuck yeah, like I'm the shit. I just like partied all night long. I went to the studio the very next day and I was so hungover. I'd never been to the Chateau Marmont either. So that was like a big, big gag. Cause I'm like, it's the coolest hotel in the world. Like it is like the coolest place, love it to death. Um, a lot about it in my album, but like I went to the studio. I was so hungover, too hungover to sing. So I just like wrote about my one night stand. I was like, I feel daddy as fuck. And like all that shit. And I just was like, I like was rapping and it was fun. And I feel like who I am in my music, like I, I'm obviously, I told you, I'm like more sober now. Like I keep, for album release purposes, I've been taking a backseat to partying, but like, you know, like I am a whore. I will say though, <laughs> as far as you say in your full 10 and that your songs that you make are you, you did make an entire song about how you got your tits done. As we established shit. earlier, you did not, in fact, get your tits done. That's so a I manifestation. Think, I, think, I think you're. Maybe 70%. It's a gray area. Yeah. 70, 75%. Because I also... Like about like, like about 20, 25% of your music is aspirational manifestations versus... Yes. Okay. But a lot of it is real. A lot of it is like very true to my life. I feel like I Love Hollywood is like a very fine line between satirical things and like me for real. Mm -hmm. More observations about like celebrity culture and clout parties and whatever. Okay. Yeah. I'll accept that answer. Yeah. I was about to say, I was about to call you out. You're like, oh, I'm full Slater. I was like, mm, mm. we can revisit the titty song. I don't have sculpture in my hips. Not yet. But he did suck my clit. All night. All night. Me, oh my. Someone told me once they thought I was saying alt right. <laughs> all right. No, alt right. Oh, alt right. They thought oh. I was saying alt right. And I was like, no, I was saying all right. Oh, not the dog whistle. I know. Fuck. The Missouri jumped out. The Missouri jumped out. Speaking of the Missouri jumping out, you are a girl from Missouri, and I would be remiss if I didn't ask, where were you on January 6th? I ask because <laughs> you are terminally online. Yes. You post all the time. But January 5th, you posted about wanting to make frog cakes. <laughs> January 6th itself, you were radio silent. And it wasn't until two days later that you came back making frog cakes. I'm not an expert on frog cakes. <laughs> I don't think they take three days to make. Where were you? Were you Slater, were you at the Capitol? No! You know what? I'm glad that you said the frog cake comment because now I call back to exactly where I was. Me and my ex-boyfriend had COVID because I keep forgetting that whole Capitol thing was during the pandemic, right? 
Like, there was lockdown. Me and my ex-boyfriend had COVID. We were, like, shacked up at my first apartment in L.A., my little Beverly Hills studio apartment. We were baking frog cakes. We were hacking up a lung. We were, we were fucked. I'm just, I'm just like, this, this sounds, like a, sounds like a very convenient excuse that you don't have any, anything posted or any evidence that you were anywhere but the Capitol on January 6th. Damn. I mean, he has my alibi, but I mean, you could do the same bit with him where you're like, where were you on January 6th? I need photo evidence. I need like a photo. I need a receipt from January 6th that you got stuff from the Smiths. Like you got something I got from, flour from and eggs. Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> I could find it. green icing. Yeah. January 6th, you were preparing a frog cake. I was preparing a frog cake okay. and tending to my sick ex-boyfriend's needs. Okay. We're, we're going to trust your alibi for now unless someone can sift through the crowd photos of that fateful day when America was changed. But for now, we'll we'll accept that alibi. You zoom in, you see this fuck-ass wig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a dry Party City wig. It is dry. It's like, wait a minute. I've worn this wig for a bunch of shoots and like she is on her last holding leg. a sign that says, all tried. All tried. <laughs> fuck. The allegations never stop, do they? Mm -hmm. I feel like everyone thinks I'm this like Republican gun toting like yee yee like it's so funny. Doesn't help that you dress like you're from Missouri gas station. Doesn't help that I have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. No, I don't. I wish I did though. Yeah. Everything about your demeanor says that you would have like a, a small one. A piece. A little a bit one. of a piece. Not like a real gun. I'm like not opposed. Tiny, like I'm a big advocate, big advocate, obviously, for gun control. I think that there needs to be more gun control. But at the same time, L.A. is scary and I'm a woman. And sometimes I do. I do. I love a shooting range. I love controlled. Like, I, I love shooting guns. <laughs> I do. You seem, you seem like someone that carries pepper spray, but would prefer to have a tiny gun. A tiny piece. Have you seen those ones on TikTok that are actually teeny tiny oh, yeah, working like guns? Yeah. That is so terrifying that those exist, first of all, because they shoot bullets and they're like literally this big. Mm -hmm. You could pull it out of your pocket and like actually really hurt someone probably. But um, yeah, like I, yeah, I carry pepper spray, but like I do love a good piece. Like I feel like uh, my first memory shooting a gun was like down by the river with my friends. That's very Missouri. Very Missouri. Yeah. Cracked it off at the rock. No ear protection. There's a video of me doing it, and my hearing blew out because, like, oh gosh, we're that all. explains the music. Yeah. <laughs> ah! Yeah. <laughs> I, I got tinnitus <laughs> from shooting guns at the river with my friends. Down at the creek. Down at the creek, down at the river. Mm -hmm. In, uh, yeah, in Cuba, Missouri. I will forever be, like, a very scrappy girl. Like, I don't ever. Even if I had like all the money in the world, like I would hope that I'm still like you're, you're gonna get like a hit song that's gonna break through, and then all the money's gonna come in, and then you're gonna forget about all this. You're gonna forget you were ever on the show. Not you true. Little, you're gonna forget you're like, oh yeah, I did live in Missouri for. A no, minute. you got me wrong. I'm not like, that my, kind of girl. Who? I am like I'm I'm addicted to like the hustle and the struggle. Like I could have all the money in the world, and I would still figure out how to squander it and still be in a crunch. Do you think it's because you grew up somewhat affluent that you're just like glamorizing the poor life? Do you think that's what it really is? No, I did not grow up affluent at all. Grew up in a ten bedroom home in St. Louis. <laughs> My parents were so financially irresponsible that it dripped down to me where it's like any bit of money that I get I squandered. Like I just fucking blow it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like in a crunch and I'm like, fuck, I can't pay my bill this week. Like, what do I do? And then I figure it out always. But it's like, I think that there's an art to being I think being financially responsible is so boring. Like I would rather like live life by the fucking seat of my coat or whatever, coat of my seat tails. See to my coattails, by the tails of my wings, by the w feathers of my bird wings. Yeah, that's what they say. That's the saying, yeah. I'd rather v fly on my bird's feather wings high and live every day large. <laughs> now, you, now you leaking the lyrics to your, ne to your next album. To my, ba to my next ballad. Yeah. <laughs> on angel's wings. But yeah, I honestly like... If you spend money, it'll come back to you. Like I, 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 I how that works. Yes, I love to glamorize just like being in a pickle. Like it's it's fun to like live so like frivolously and like I don't know. Like I feel like life is so short. I could die tomorrow, and it's like, could you imagine if I died tomorrow and I didn't like fucking credit card charge like the Gucci sunglasses? That would suck. I would I would have just rather have done it than oh I saved my money and then when I was really old I had enough money to retire and buy my little puddings for my little fridge. Like no, like I want to live large and go out with a fucking bang. Hit me with a car. Like I don't care. Like you know what I mean? I'd rather go down and be major. I'd rather live life really major and be major than like 
be smart about shit. <laughs> My that. business managers are watching this and they're like shaking their fists at me. <laughs> But, you know, there are other people that rely on you, you know, and, like your yeah. career and your success. But no, I'm just kidding. I'm, that was all a joke. I, 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 I hope to be more financially responsible in years to come. And I have gotten a lot better. I used to be really a lot worse. But I also just like I just love. I don't know. I want to be like I want to be like Lindsay Lohan. In what way? Like Chateau living at the Chateau Marmont and racking up a bill that she never paid and then had to flee to Greece, Lindsay Lohan. That Lindsay Lohan. Okay. That happened. And I like, I think that is the sickest story. She stole Lady Gaga's earrings. Did you ever see that? No. One of my favorite things ever. Like Lindsay Lohan posted a tweet and I saw it on Perez Hilton. And she posted a tweet and she was like, cleaning my jewelry, like something, something Elizabeth Taylor. And Lady Gaga responded to the tweet. She said, LOL, this is awkward. Are those my earrings? Kiss, kiss, Chateau Bunny. And I like think that is the fiercest tweet ever. I always have been said, kiss, kiss, Chateau Bunny. I love that. <laughs> For your music, would you rather receive a Grammy or get slimed by Nickelodeon? Receive a Grammy. Receive a Grammy? You don't want to get slimed? I am not for kids. They would. They should not. I should never that's be at the. More, that's why it's more camp. It's more. It's iconic. more camp. Yeah. It's it's like whenever the weekend was doing his like I can't feel my face song at the Nickelodeon Teens Choice Awards. Oh my God! It's about Coke. Yeah, the whole song's about Coke, and the kids are just like. I, yeah, maybe getting slimed would be fun, but I'm like, ugh, like that seems so uncomfortable. Like it would ruin my hair. Like I don't want to do that. These are wearing your cheap wigs. <laughs> don't worry about it. Fuck! But for a, a lot of people out there, a lot of like young boys and girls, like you kind of bootstrap your own like pop music career. For all the boys and girls out there that want to aspire to be pop stars too, but they don't even know where to start, mm -hmm. what would be your advice to getting into the industry, getting music out there to people, becoming the pop stars they want to? What are the steps? I would say that, like, it's unfortunate, but my biggest tip is that it really is an internet game these days. You have got to, like, do something with your social media. You have to use TikTok. I, it took me a long time to come around about TikTok as an artist. I, like, did not want to use the platform at all and only recently have started, like, getting more into it. But, like, if you want to get your music heard by people and get out there, like, you need to make engaging content and you need to market yourself. You have to, you're selling yourself to people. It's not just about being talented anymore. You really have to, you know, cultivate something cool. Do something that other people aren't doing. Like make shit that you want to listen to and your audience will find you. You will find your audience. And there's a little bit of luck in there that you need. But I really think that like learning to play social media is really important. You know, mm -hmm. like Twitter, Twitter is what got me where I am today. It's being a shit poster. Being a shit poster, putting my song, but like in such a real way, like I would post snippets of my songs and people would use them for fan edits. And then it would just keep like going and like people, there was like a trend on Twitter for a while where people would do really fast uh, meme clips mm -hmm. and everyone put my song mine to it, the oh me, oh my. And that's like what hit that song off on Stan Twitter. By posting online and putting the music out like on like SoundCloud, like Stan Twitter, it got you in touch with Aisha Erotica. Mm -hmm. And that's when things really started to click with you. How did you, come to work with Aisha Radhika. How did that happen? Just through like Twitter DMs. I was really, really, I was like, I didn't have any music out at the time, but someone sent me her and was like, oh, you look like Aisha Radhika, but blonde. And then I like looked into her music and I was like, oh my God, who is this person? She had so many sick songs, like just up on her SoundCloud, but like, it seemed like no one, like she didn't have a lot of followers or anything. And I was just like, this is so crazy. I feel like I had like come across this like gem of an artist and I hit her up to work and got lucky enough that she said yes and was down and she sent me like this demo for BFF which was like my debut single and I wrote my verse for it and we like did it as a collab song and she was always just really cool to me and kind of like you know I never met her in person until very recently but she kind of like through the internet like helped like with my beats and like kind of helped guide like my my music and yeah, like I honestly, like I feel like I owe her like my life. Like I, I adore her. I think that she's like such a sick artist and me linking up with her really felt like the start of like everything, you know? For the audience that doesn't know, Aisha Erotica, even if you don't know who that is, you have 100% heard something of her. Oh, hers. they know who she is. If, if you're on the internet, you've heard her music. Yeah. Like you've heard it either way, like TikTok audio, sound. Yeah. Like, there's so many people that share TikTok audios not even realizing that like who that is. Well, even when she kind of stepped away from the internet for all that time, like the cult, like love of her music, like the cult fan base and audience, like she has had so many songs go viral and have like Cardi B like walked out to one of her songs at the AMAs. Like she is so 
her music is so incredible and like I hear her influence in modern music all the time. Like I'll hear a song and it'll be like, that sounds like Aisha, but like no one is touching like, like her level, her ability to like rap and write and produce is like so unlike anyone I've ever known in music. Like no one has bars like that, like that woman, like it is crazy. And it's really cool. It's like, it feels like, I don't even know, like I feel very blessed. I feel like I've worked with like a once in a lifetime kind of artist. Like I hope, I wish that more people would, get get into it you know like yeah it's, it's crazy i didn't realize you had like never met before yeah it was all through the internet the internet has like really changed my life it's a really really insane tool for like the modern artist i only have one more question for you if you could listen to just one more song for the rest of your life what would it be Ooh. maybe surfs up by the beach boys that's a beautiful song. Why that song in particular? It's like haunting. Really sad. Surf's Up, Surf's Up by the Beach Boys like makes me cry. That's one of like the greatest songs ever written. Fuck, that's a great song. Surf's Up, mm -hmm. That song is like, I don't know. There's something that's like existential about it. Like I feel like I'm gonna die when I listen to it. Well, unfortunately that is the last bit of time that we have. It's the last of my questions. You're like, get out of here. <laughs> but since you mentioned Surf's Up by the Beach Boys as a thank you gift for coming and a happy birthday because yesterday was your birthday. Yeah! I to gift you something. What? This is a signed copy of Surf's Up by the Beach Boys. I had to pull some strings. Oh my God! Whoa! You just like, that just gagged the fuck out of me. Oh my God! Oh so my God, sure you do you imagine I didn't say this song? That's crazy too, like, but this is, this is like my all time favorite If you didn't, I would have made you, but <laughs> so you can listen to Surf's Up for the rest of your life. This makes me wanna cry. <laughs> Thank you so much, can I give you a, ooh, can oh, I gosh. give you a hug? Like struggling to give this up. is like the nicest thing I've ever been given. This is so cool. Yeah, oh my it. God, this is crazy. Oh my God. I just want the record to show I did not even get a copy of Starfucker, but. Well, the I don't have the vinyl. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, I only have my sample vinyls right now. Yeah, you're like, go to Target. It should be out. To, uh, no, I, I would love to send you, I, I would love to send you like a full like care package of everything if you're down. You're gonna send me a PR package? Yeah, I would love to. I mean, I know that like, I feel like it's so far to be like, who wants my Slater shirts? But like, if you, I would love to send you some like vinyls and stuff if you want. Oh yeah, 100%. This is so special. Thank you so much. This is crazy. When people hear surfs up by the Beach Boys, they probably think it's like some boppy little song. But that's the, why it's genius. Yeah, the whole thing with the album was that it was like they're going away of like getting shedding the old image of you know the mm -hmm. 50s Beach Boys. Brian aesthetic. Wilson's departure. That have you seen the movie? Mm -mm. Sorry, like keep talking your ear off. But there is a movie that's like the Brian Wilson biopic. It's about his life and the whole time that they're making all that like, we love to surf and we're at the beach and it's great and she's blonde and her T-bird. Like he like mm -hmm. hated all that stuff and felt like such a hack and when he went and made Pet Sounds, he's like a musical genius and like really wanted to create like thoughtful, like introspective, like crazy music that was like really experimental. And this was like, this yeah. album was like that, yeah, like that departure into- All, all the tonal shifts. And the tonal shift and- Experimentation. This is wicked. This is the coolest thing I've ever been given. I cannot thank you enough. Yeah, on that note, that is the last bit of time we have and the last of my cards. So Slater, obviously you just dropped your new album. Where else can people find you? Do you have any shows coming up? Any events happening? Any social medias you want to plug? Yes, I'm going on tour October 26th. I start my US tour in Boston, the Club Valentine tour. It's going to be a wicked time. Would love to have you. And yeah, everyone can just check me out. Slater on all socials. That is S-L-A-Y-Y-Y-T-E-R. I repeat, that is S-L-A-Y-Y-Y-T-E-R. Or Miss New Titties. Or that. Miss New Tits. And uh, I'll see you motherfuckers on the next one. Yeah. <laughs> you can find me right here. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And join us next time whenever we have somebody else. And yeah. Or me again. Or, or Slater again. Yeah, new eras. You know, why not? <laughs> Checking it out. All right, but yeah, until then. Bye, guys. Hi. <laughs>